Hey, it's Dick Tebow the Gizwiz. I love Lab Rats TV. Sean is great. Randy is... Dick. What? Andy. It's Andy. Oh, oh, and Andy. Well, Andy's, Andy's okay. Sean is wonderful. Cause only because Sean's running the camera and I'm trying to get extra time. So it's the Gizwiz and Mad Magazine's Maddest Writer, and you're watching Lab Rats TV. Hey, and welcome to Lab Rats. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is episode number 13. Lucky 13. I love 13. And we have, uh, we have uh, lots to celebrate because, of course, we're approaching our 1 millionth download. So for the, those of you out there that have been downloading us consistently since the beginning, thanks a bunch. We, we really appreciate that. Um, today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects. Motherboards. <laughs> I thought you were going to fill that in because it was your favorite <laughs> subject. You know, I love motherboards too. Motherboards. Now, uh, we're going to basically walk you through exactly um, the anatomy, I guess, the anatomy of the motherboards. And Don't you love your book? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And that, that's a good uh, segue because this is actually suggested by one of our viewers, Anders, from Sweden, who uh, wrote in to win the copy of Andy's book that, that you cut up. I brutally into, cut into up. Pieces. This isn't the one, but it's actually Anders. It's already in an envelope, ready to go. You just need to email us uh, with your address and we will send you a copy of the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security Spam, Spyware, and Viruses. And if he does that a few more times this episode, there may be another cut-up copy to go out real soon. <laughs> All right, anyway, so... Anyway, let, let's get, let's get, get on with this. the show because this is a information pack. It's very exciting. Right, motherboard is something that's very, very intimidating. It's the control center of your computer. And there's a number of reasons why you'd want to know about this. And a lot of people just are like, motherboard, why would I need to know about that? But there's, there's a few reasons. Uh, there's the CPU is, is part of the motherboard. The RAM goes on it. All of the cards, like your video card, all of those go in there. So if you're thinking about upgrading at some point, you want a new CPU. Even if you want to do something as simple as adding a little bit of extra RAM, it pays to know where the things are. I think people just uh, have a perverse uh, curiosity about what the heck's in that box on their desk. That's true. So, uh, but it, it can be a tangle. If you've never looked at one, it can be very intimidating. So we're going to show you what the parts are. Okay. What goes where? What's the most exciting thing on a motherboard? Um, the CPU, of course. <laughs> so microprocessors. Where exactly does that go? Well, there's typically a socket off to one end. Mm -hmm. uh, usually has this sort of creamy color right over mm, here. With a little uh, wingy thing here. The wing thing. Yeah. Mm. There, there's a few different. Uh, there's a few different methods of connecting a CPU to a motherboard. This is the old school one. It, it's one that features pins. Mm -hmm. And the, the CPU goes in while the, the arm is up. Then you flip the arm down. And it sucks it into the motherboard. And, and then it pulls it down and right. clamps it into place. And then typically you put a heat sink over top of it. We've got another one here. This is an Intel board. The one that I was showing is an AMD, but this is an, an Intel board. And typically a big heat sink and fan goes on top of that. So what exactly does a heat sink do then? A heat sink takes the heat away from the, the processor because the processor generates quite a lot of heat actually. Mm -hmm. So it takes it away from the processor, dissipates it into the box typically, right. and then outside using the fans inside uh, the back of your CPU uh, case. So often then, so, so you have a heat sink that dissipates heat and then a fan on top of that to augment that process, is that right? right. To blow that, blow, blow air as well through the it case. Ju it just brings the heat off a lot quicker with the fan on top. There you go, okay. Uh, microprocessors, people always talk about RAM, that's one of, the, one of the key things people want to know. In, in fact, I always talk about it's probably the cheapest way to upgrade an existing computer uh, by adding extra RAM. Right. So you want to know exactly where the RAM goes, so show us, yeah. Sean. Yeah, before you even think about upgrading that uh, processor, look at this. It's, it's typically right beside the processor. Um, we've got four slots here. And uh, there's a few things to worry about in terms of RAM. We should probably look at RAM a little bit more thoroughly in an upcoming episode, the differences between DDR, DDR2, the mm. old SD RAM, yep. and what it all means. But typically, you stick it into one of these slots, make sure that the, the, the notch is correct. You have a little notch right here. You line that up and uh, click Snap. it into place. Yeah, that's the most satisfying noise I ever think. I think, you know, because it's like, ah. Oh. More memory. I'm so excited. Right, and it can feel a little bit sickening as you're pushing yeah. it into yeah. the board. You have to add a, add a fair amount of force to get it in there. Yeah, it, uh, it can feel a little bit like you're about to break the board, but most of the time you're not, as long as you have everything lined up properly. And then to get it out, you just click these uh, little tabs on either side. So you, you make sure these tabs are out when you're about to snap it in, but then it just, it just snaps in like that. So typically you'll have one of these in your system when right. you get it from your manufacturer. So, so like most people that. will open this up, then they'll see a couple, two or three blank, empty ones and, and probably one chip. 
right. in the actual uh, in one of the slots. Yeah, and generally that means you have plenty of room for expansion. Now, if you have four of these already in here and four slots, then you may have to rethink this. No, right. you, your board may not have a lot of room for expansion. But like I said, that's another episode. We'll go right. into that a little bit later on. Okay. So we talked about the process, we talked about RAM um, storage. Let's talk about storage next. The hard drive connects, it, it doesn't go right onto the board, but it connects to the board usually using a cable. And we don't have the hard drive for the sake of space here, but we do have the cable here. So right here uh, we have two IDE connectors, They're also known as ATA connectors. It is also where your CD-ROM connects, and that's called a tappy. Mm -hmm. um, wait a second, what if, I have two thing. what if I have two hard drives and two optical drives, then no don't problem. I need four connectors? No, because, well, just plug this cable in first, right. and then we'll show you one of the miracles of this. So you've got a little notch on here. You line that up with the notch on the board. Right. And now you'll see on this end, we actually have two connectors. Aha. Uh -huh. So with IDE, you have the ability to connect two different drives to the same chain. So two devices per ribbon. Right. So you can have a CD and another CD burner. Right. For example, you can have a CD and a hard drive. Right. You have two hard drives or you know, yeah. what, whatever you can mix and match on that. Awesome. Okay. And so that you can double that up on this second chain. And uh, despite the fact that this one is blue and this one is black, it works the same way. All right. It's just so that, it's, that's just for just orienting. One of them is primary, one is secondary. Right. Okay. So no problems. Now, now, not, now not the newer motherboards don't have uh, IDE connectors, do they? Or they do, but they also have another technology as well. Yeah, a lot of them use a serial ATA, mm -hmm. which is this cable right here. Now, if you're not paying close attention, mm -hmm. you may miss that on the board. So I'll just flip this around, because this okay. is on the other side here. Right. We've got uh, two little ones here and two up here. And uh, you line them up. There's a little L-shaped here. They're keyed so you don't put them in backwards. And then you connect them up like that. Now, okay. these ones are one-to-one. -one. one uh, connector, one drive. Okay, so is there hard, there's going to be a hard drive on the end of this thing. Right. Right. Now, is there, now does this carry, these carry power, right? They do not. They do not. No, they're like they the IDE not. cables. They uh, connect only via data. Right. So you'll need uh, an adapter here mm -hmm. for the power for the drive. We uh, talked about hard drives on another episode, right. and we forgot to talk about the fact that they actually use a different power connector. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That uh, brings us to the power supply. Woo! You need power. to get power to this thing. Right. I always get intimidated by these things. I don't know why. They just look They look kind of big and scary, and they've got a million different cables. So tell us yeah. a little bit about, you know, what, what's with all of these guys? Yeah, I'll put this down for a second. All of these hook up to the various components inside your system. So there's not just one connector from the power source into the motherboard. There's multiple for different parts no. of the motherboard? Right. Well, you have two or three that connect directly to the motherboard, and a lot of the rest of these will connect to the things that are in your system, like, uh, say, the hard drive or the CD drive. These smaller ones typically connect to the floppy drive. Oh, okay. Or some, some of them connect to video cards or other additional things that run in the front of your system. So th right. there's a, a number of different things that will use these standard connectors. Okay. But the, 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 here's, this is the big part, yeah. right? This the, one? The big one right here is called the ATX connector right. on, on modern motherboards. And this will connect right to this. And it has another satisfying snap in there. <laughs> Okay. Um, now, this one right here is a 20-pin connector. Okay. Some of the newer motherboards use 24 now. So, so that means that not every single power source out there will connect to every single motherboard. Some need right. unique adapters. Is that right? right? So this one right here, if you notice right here, it's actually four short. Oh, right. So what you can get these days is a lot of the new power supplies will come with 24 Oh, it'll have it, an adapter. But it'll have an adapter for the other four, so you can right. slide the other four in there if you have a 24-pin uh, motherboard, mm -hmm. and you can take it off if you just have 20. Very cool, very cool. Okay, so that, that's one of the connectors on there. That's the main one you'll need. Now, right. on all motherboards, you need at least a second one, and that's the 12-volt connector, hmm. which is a little four-pin. Okay. And that typically connects right in beside the uh, right in beside the CPU, and you just have to orient it properly for the tab, and in you go. And wow. it's, it's hard, uh, if not impossible, to connect these up incorrectly. Incorrectly, yeah. Well, that's good. It's kind of stupid proof from that perspective. Right. Yeah. And some of the first Pentium 4 boards mm -hmm. had a third connector called the auxiliary connector, which is another, I, I don't know, 5 volts, I believe. But right. it, it connected over here somewhere. This one doesn't have it. And this one doesn't have it because you don't need it anymore. One of the biggest mistakes I, have, I always make, you know, if I'm in there uh, with my motherboard, uh, maybe, you know, adding a second hard drive or doing all kinds of sort of, uh, maybe adding RAM, stuff like that. To get into the, the de device, sometimes I may end up and unplug all the power 
you know, because the cables are in the way. And it's one thing that a lot of people can do. You know, even if you're not building your own computer, even if you're just in there maybe adding stuff, um, make sure you plug all these guys in. I mean, look how many there are. And if you unplug them, and all of a sudden you start your machine up, and either A, it doesn't start at all, there's no lights, or it starts up, but for example, your optical drive's not working, or your second hard drive's not working, go back in and check these, because this is e really easy to disconnect and forget to reconnect, because right. there's you, so many of them. If you don't connect this one, sometimes I believe you can you turn the, the power button on and it'll go beep, beep, beep. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Making so. Making a post beeping sound, yeah? Yep, and you know, the same with you, just not connecting the RAM properly. You know, there's a number of reasons that that can happen, but yeah, right. the, the power is a huge one It's a huge that. piece of the, yeah, piece of the, okay. And right. if you're going into the, uh, the, the case of your computer system, one of the things you really want to do is ground yourself somehow. So oh, if yes. you've just shuffled across your uh, carpet, yeah, in, your, in, in your pink bunny slippers, by the way. Right, <laughs> and you've built up a charge. The last thing you want to do is reach in and touch the RAM no. or touch the CPU yeah, or gonna, the board because you can short things out. You'll fry them out, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, graphic cards. Graphics cards. Yes. Yeah, so we've got on every board, you've got a slot for your graphics card. Mm -hmm. This right here is an AGP slot. You can tell because it's brown. <laughs> is that right? Brown? That, for Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, brown doesn't mean UPS in this case, then? No. no? And uh, there's also, on this board right here, you can actually see this one is black. Uh -huh. and this is a PCI Express slot. Uh -huh. PCI Express is, I don't know if they're always black, but they are at slightly different formations. So yeah. depending on the type of card you have, you know, the, the slot will be different. Who would have thunk it? I didn't know yeah. there was actually color coding. Yeah, but typically when you're, when you're counting, you know, we're going to orient it with the CPU at the top. When you're looking down, yeah. typically the top slot is the one right. for your graphics card. Now, and below that are, is? P these are PCI slots. And right. These are where you plug in other things that you may have, like additional RAID card or a sound card or. Or other in the old like days, that. a fax mode and things like that. Sure. But it's, so things that actually poke out on the back of your computer, you have to see the vertical slots. Mm -hmm. And, and so there's a, maybe a sound card or something like that. Yeah. That's a PCI slot. That's what the, P the card is going to the PCI slot and it's backing out onto the back of the computer. Right, and, and all motherboards typically have these. Some of the new ones with PCI Express, they're moving to all PCI Express in a lot of cases, so you're losing the PCI, you're losing the AGP. Right. Now, if you've got a really hoary old motherboard, like it's just been collecting dust for forever, yeah. right down at the bottom here, you'll see these black ones oh. with a really thick slot in them, and those are known as the ISA slots. Uh, yes, that goes and back to the, early, the late 1980s and early 1990s. And if you have one of those in your motherboard, let me tell you, Upgrade now, <laughs> because that motherboard is so far out of date, you won't be able to do much upgrading at this point. So the ISA is your, uh, your bellwether right there. Right. If you got it, get rid of it. Any Upgrade. final, any, well, actually, one final word about, uh, I think, sound and also uh, video cards is that these new PCI um, Express uh, boards actually have integrated video mm -hmm. and integrated audio too. So mm -hmm. you may not actually have a sound card plugged into your PCI adapter or anything in your AGP. That's actually a good point. Looking at the back of the motherboard, there's all this stuff along the back here. And this is where you plug in things like your, uh, your, P your PS2 mm -hmm. mouse, mouse and keyboard yeah. if you have the older ones. Right. You've got a printer port. You've got USB ports. You've got uh, right here sound ports. Right. Uh, some of them will have it built in. Some won't. Right. So this means uh, actually there's, there's an integrated sound capability in this motherboard. So you wouldn't right. actually need a separate sound blaster card going in your PCI Correct. slot it's, there. It's not necessarily going to be the best in the world, but right. it should do you. And there's also on this one... Uh, we have an Ethernet, and do we have, yeah, Ooh. we actually even have FireWire on here. Ooh. So there's a lot of stuff built right. into modern motherboards. Very good. Now we'll show you on this one what Andy was just talking about. We've got a built-in VGA port here, which is a video. Yeah. Now you don't need it. You can actually plug your PCI Express card in over here, and it'll be much better. Right. This one will be good. It'll be a lot better than the ones you'll see on those old motherboards that have those ISA slots still on them. But, uh, you know, if you're really, really a performance computer, you want... Uh, something that can handle gaming. You don't want to go with the one that's built in. It's poo-poo. Well, thanks, Sean. That's, uh, there you go. That's an anatomy of a motherboard. And you probably know more now about motherboards than most than your mother, for sure. And uh, I don't know, most people. Um, thanks. That was actually a fun, kind of a fun tour. Did, no you, did you have fun? I did. Yes. <laughs> did you want to talk about the battery? Oh, yeah, the battery. He lost the battery. I like the battery. This idea. one's going to run long, folks. <laughs> Anyways, the battery right here, this, every motherboard has a battery on it. Right. And that is uh, when your system powers down, it saves your things like your date and, and other important system right. information that the computer needs to actually boot properly. So if, you, if you're setting your date on your computer and you know, for whatever reason it's not sticking, you know, the date just keeps resetting itself, mm -hmm. it's because your battery on the motherboard is, is toast and needs to be replaced. And that's fairly easy to do. Right. Just, just yeah, you just, uh, I'm going to... 
try to get this out. There's a little clip in there and then the battery should pop out like this. And it's a standard CR2032 watch battery typically. And uh, just replacing that will often solve a lot of those problems. If your system is flaky, not holding its settings every time you fire it up, right. your, your parallel port disappears or whatever, that's probably your cause. There you go. Oh, now are we done? Uh, yeah, I, except I sense another book plug uh, coming. Yeah, well, well uh, yeah, okay, well, why not? You mentioned it. My book is The Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security Spam, Spyware and Viruses. There's pretty much nothing about motherboards in here, although actually there's something about motherboard chipset drivers. But anyway, that's my little plug. Thanks for downloading. Uh, don't forget, on the, on the front page of labrats.tv, there is a link uh, for a survey, an audience survey, a viewer survey. We'd love you to uh, click on that and answer a few questions for us so we can learn more about you because, as it turns out, we're coming up to our millionth download. So we're thrilled about that. Thanks for being so faithful. Isn't it amazing? It's crazy. I know. I can't yeah. believe that. It's actually mostly my mom and her friends. <laughs> and we're getting the wrap-up sign now <laughs> right. from Matt. Anyway, thank you. Um, and send us feedback at feedback at labrats.tv. And for Labrats, uh, I am Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> you don't get a cookie. Yeah, you don't know your name. <laughs>